Welcome back to James chapter 3. We're talking about the contrast between operating in God's wisdom and operating in uh, the world's wisdom. And there is a vast contrast which James has painted. And uh, the wisdom that uh, stems from God is, is uh, evident by the, our behavior. It's not just uh, spouting off words of wisdom and that makes you wise. Oh no, James makes that very clear. Now, um, he's emphasized twice in this passage that we've been studying about the wisdom of God, the, um, the fact that God's wisdom always uh, contains gentleness. It always uh, is characterized by gentleness. And remember, uh, early on, as we were talking at the beginning of our study of James, uh, James is writing to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad. And we're thinking this is a, the earliest epistle of the New Testament, that it happened shortly after the persecution that arose in the church in Jerusalem in relationship to the martyrdom of Stephen. And, and so uh, these are folks that have really suffered, and now they're scattered about. Um, and, uh, you know, they've been chased out of their homes by unbelieving Jews, chased away from their jobs and, and you know, their livelihood and so forth. So they're really suffering. Uh, but it's clear from what James writes here, there were still troubles in the church. Persecution didn't uh, purify it all the way here. Uh, there, was, there were problems uh, within the church, and we'll be reading shortly uh, about the fact that there were quarrels and conflicts within the church. But I think in this final verse that we're going to be looking at this time, uh, verse number 18, we're going to see that James has some words for Christians, how they relate to non-Christians, because that is all, oh, boy, that's a challenge. Okay, and a kind of a cryptic verse here, but I think I've got it figured out, so I'm happy that I'm going to get a chance to share, share it with you. Um, James 3, verse number 18, he says, And the seed whose fruit is righteousness, is sown in peace by those who make peace. Now, I think a couple of things immediately come to mind. He's obviously speaking, you know, metaphorically here. He's not talking about literally going out and planting corn or wheat seeds or something into the ground. Uh, we know that Jesus compared the word of God to a seed, didn't he? He had told the parable of the sower and the seeds, and, and he said the seed is the word of God. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's also what James is trying to communicate here. The seed, the word of God, let's say, whose fruit is righteousness. Well, what word of God whose fruit is righteousness, uh, you know, what, what word of God is that? Well, I would say that it's the gospel. Okay, because that's what produces righteousness in people. When you proclaim the gospel to them, if they believe it and they're born again, that produces the fruit of the Spirit because they become born again into a, by the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit begins to manifest through them. Okay, so in, in my opinion, James is talking here about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's, if that's true, it's interesting because then it gives us insight into something that Jesus said that we read together way back when we read in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. James goes on and he says that seed that the, the fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Now, bing, there ought to be a little light bulb go on right there by those who make peace. Do you ever remember something Jesus said about blessed are the peacemakers? That's one of the Beatitudes, for they shall be called sons of God. And we kind of wondered back then, we read it, you know, what is he talking about there precisely? Peacemakers, you know, are we, are we like always settling quarrels between people? Is that what Christ is talking about? Or is he talking about something bigger and greater than that? And I think he is. I think he was. He was talking about, you know, People who are born again want other people to be born again. They're letting their light shine. When they get an opportunity, they're, you know, they're interjecting about Jesus there. They're trying to help people make peace with God by sharing the gospel. And so blessed are the peacemakers. We're helping people make peace with God. And of course, that results in peace with one another. You know, it reconciles us not only to God, but to each other. But the seed, the gospel, whose fruit is righteousness, is sown in peace 
by those who make peace. And so as we interact with unbelievers, we've always got to take the upper road, the high road, rather than sinking ourselves to the low road. They will curse us. We do not curse those who are created in God's image. We bless those who curse us, as Jesus said. And when they disagree with us, the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but gentle, kind to all, patient with all men, correcting those in opposition with gentleness, Paul wrote. So that's the same exact thing here. You're dealing with unbelievers, always be gentle, always be peace, peaceable, because what you're trying to do is, is ultimately uh, produce a, a reconciliation for them, with them, with God. The seed whose fruit is righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Okay, now he'll continue on that theme. James uh, starts in my Bible, a new chapter. Boy, I wish, you know, we didn't have all that chapter stuff because um, he's going to start talking about s similar things, quarrels and conflicts in the church. And I don't have time to get into it now, but I'm just reminded as we close this uh, of a poem I heard by an elderly pastor years ago. I never forgot it. I thought it was so funny and uh, so true. Here it is. Ah, to live above with the saints we love, that will be all glory. But to live down here with the saints so dear, that's a different story. Yeah. And uh, that's funny because we do think we're all going to get along in heaven because we'll all be in heaven. It won't be wonderful up there. But we're supposed to be in the kingdom here right now, and we need to be learning to get along while we're on this earth. And Christians have conflicts uh, because they're still in the flesh and still have that residue of the old nature and, and uh, you know people are different and so forth and so we start living together and interacting there's bound to be trouble James has an answer we're going to talk about that answer next time it's going to be great see you then Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.